Dear friends, uh, good morning. Unfortunately, I cannot be uh, live uh, with you, but uh, I think this uh, recorded message will cover uh, some of the areas that I would like to also present to you if I was uh, there uh, in this uh, conference. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers for taking the initiative to talk about the blue economy and to specifically adjust the blue economy to uh, the sustainable development and, of course, the European policies. Let me start with what I feel that is uh, very important and very important for European Union is the Mediterranean Sea, which is unique compared to all the other oceans of the sea. It, although it covers only 1% of the world uh, ocean's uh, surface, still it generates the 20% of the global GDP. More than 400 billion euros are being, uh, are being produced in, uh, in uh, Mediterranean. And of course, more than 200 millions of Europeans are living in the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Therefore, the, Euro the Mediterranean is not just another sea where we can spend our vacation or actually communicate with the other, uh, uh, um, with the other continents like Africa or Asia, but it is also one great source of income for the European Union, apart from being also a source of stability as being the boundary with the other continents. Furthermore, in terms of shipping, uh, the Mediterranean is all uh, the traffic in Mediterranean represents almost a quarter of the global traffic and uh, more than 30 percent of oil traffic in the world. Therefore, showing this shows uh, the importance, the strategic importance of Mediterranean, but also it shows how much in danger can be the Mediterranean Sea through a leakage or an incident at sea. Furthermore, Mediterranean Sea consists of 600 ports and more than 100,000 fishing vessels that actually represent one of the biggest uh, fishing uh, fleets in the world. And finally, for us Mediterraneans, and especially for us Greece, the Mediterranean Sea is the air we breathe and the area we want to live in. It's actually our physical environment. Therefore, we have to find ways how to develop the economic growth and also keep our sea sustainable. And I don't see any conflict in, the, in these two endeavors because exploiting the sea has been always the source of our inheritance. But also, preserving our sea is what we have to do in order to safeguard the right of the future generation to actually live and grow in this, uh, in this area. That's why Greece has actually taken the lead in putting in the European agenda the Mediterranean environment. We are alarmed by the fact that the Eastern Mediterranean temperature has uh, risen more than two degrees in the last uh, decades. And it's something that we see all the time, the new invasive uh, species that actually change the image of our uh, sea belt. Therefore, we have to react. In the framework of our chairmanship of the EU Med Group, we have presented the set of uh, actions that should be um, uh, taken by the European Union, and we have concluded with the other uh, nine members of the EU Med uh, uh, Circle uh, to what we call it the Athens Declaration, a special declaration of our leaders for preserving the environment in the Mediterranean. Furthermore, we have actually, in our country, uh, we have actually put forward a very proactive uh, 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 policies in order to preserve the environment. 
30% of uh, our seas are going to be uh, areas of uh, control, uh, uh, of control exploitation, and 10% of our seas and uh, coastal waters are going to be uh, to become area of absolute protection, meaning that we are wa we want to see the sea environment to develop and regenerate itself. Furthermore, being the global leader in shipping, we are putting for, uh, together, together with the industry, a very, uh, uh, a, a, a very ambitious uh, agenda in order to lower the emissions of, uh, created by shipping by 2050 and also to find new ways how to contain the pollution uh, that is coming out of shipping. And therefore, we want also for European Union, instead of uh, uh, taking action after every incident that occurs at sea, to be proactive and for the first time to present at the International Maritime Organization its own proposals. We want to also make our islands sustainable and actually our islands to become the hubs of the new generation, the new generation of, of clean energy, clean transportation, and therefore two islands uh, are already implementing uh, emblematic, uh, uh, emblematic uh, works, like the island of uh, Astipalia, which is actually getting into the e-mobility, and Tilos, that is going to be declared um, a emission uh, zero, island for the future. Therefore, including, therefore, together with other policies that have to do with the ban of the use of uh, single-use uh, plastics and uh, other policies that have to do with uh, sustainable uh, sea, uh, fishing, make a framework of how we believe that uh, we have to react to the perils and the danger of uh, environmental degradation of Mediterranean. Europe has taken a gigantic step by putting together the new MFF, the Multiannual Financial Framework, and the REACT EU, the Cohesion and Resilience uh, Fund that uh, has, been, uh, has been decided uh, in order to fight uh, the consequences of a COVID-19 pandemic has actually highlighted the importance of the environment for the future. One third of this money are going to be directed to the energy transition and to the clean, uh, to the clean policies. We want a great part of this to be directed in the sea environment uh, protection. I have to regretfully say that uh, during the Conference for the Future of Europe and to the rounds that have already concluded in Strasbourg, in the dialogue with the citizens of Europe, no particular recommendation covered the area of uh, sea protection and sea pollution. And it actually surprised me the fact that out of the 53 recommendations coming out of the citizens, nobody dare to speak about what we do with our common sea. Although European Union is surrounded by sea. Therefore, we want to raise this uh, to the attention to all the actors. We want to raise this issue in the forthcoming rounds, the rounds that are going to, uh, to give a greater role to the governments and to the European Parliament in order to have and adopt a comprehensive recommendations that have to do with our marine environment. Dear friends, there isn't only European Union in the Mediterranean. There are also our partners from North Africa and uh, Middle East. To that end, Greece is actually trying to build up a new bridges of communication among the two coasts of Mediterranean. We have developed with Egypt a, a very 
let's say, ambitious uh, plan uh, to connect the two shores with pipelines that are going to bring the LNG that has been found in Eastern Mediterranean through the East Med pipeline, but also with the connection, uh, with the connection, with an interconnector uh, through cables that are going to bring in uh, clean energy, clean uh, electrical energy produced on the shores of uh, North Africa. Somebody maybe say a question itself whether Greece is still committed to the East Med pipeline uh, due to the fact that the United States actually withdraw their attention to, to that project. I would like to highlight in this opportunity the importance for diversification for uh, natural gas resources for European Union. What we are seeing uh, due to the crisis in Ukraine with the rise of uh, the cost of uh, natural gas for our European citizens and the scarcity of resources uh, from which uh, Europe is provided by, by natural gas that seems immense the importance of uh, the use of these uh, uh, newly found reserves in Eastern Mediterranean in order to fight, first of all, for our, um, for our energy uh, provisions and second, in order to fight the high prices which are becoming unbearable for European economies. A final word. A final word has to do with stay safety and security. In order to have a safe environment where we can implement policies that are going to interact European Union members and other partners in the, in the region, all we should abide by the same rules in order to move forward. Therefore, the absolute implementation of the United Nations Conventions of the Law of the Sea is of great importance in order to safeguard. First of all, that the Mediterranean is not going to become, uh, another time in its history, a sea of battle, but is going to be the battleground for cooperation. And the second, uh, it has to do with the exploitation or the different possibilities uh, like the ones that I mentioned before, but also others uh, that are conducted by other member states, in order to safeguard that the cooperation among the two coasts is going to, first of all, develop a common sea which is free of pollution, is uh, open for human activities, is friendly to the visitors, and it's, uh, uh, it's bringing back growth to the local communities. In order to do so, I think that we have to cooperate and not fight each other. Thank you for your attention and let me, uh, let me say that uh, although it's not a part of what we call the blue economy, it has to be also a sea of life-saving efforts and I mean, uh, I mean about the refugees and the migrants who cross the Mediterranean uh, taking a risk for their lives, fighting all the, uh, all the human trafficking uh, uh, thrives should be a priority for all the states, for all the countries of the Mediterranean in order to safeguard, first of all, human lives and second, not to let our sea be exploited by gangs that actually give, they don't pay much attention to saving any human life, but actually exploiting human lives. Thank you for your attention once more.